Hey guys, my name is Salman Chisti or Salman MKC. I'm a Microsoft student partner and my goal is to teach you guys how to use really awesome Microsoft services and tools such as Microsoft Azure. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use Azure Logic Apps. So Azure Logic Apps is a really cool resource on Azure so that you can integrate multiple services to work together to make an application which will work in the cloud. You could use Salesforce, Office 365, Oracle, Twitter, YouTube, Dropbox, Google Services, Azure Cognitive Services, and so on. You could even hook up your own custom API. There are hundreds you can use. And we're actually going to not use any code at all. Or sort of, but like, it will be all done within Azure. So, what will we make today? We are going to be making a service which gathers a bunch of tweets based on say a hashtag or a common word and from there we're going to analyze all those tweets and then if it's positive then we're going to send an email saying okay these tweets are the positive ones and if it's negative we'll send out a different email so it's actually really simple to do using azure logic apps and you don't have to do much coding at all so yeah we're just gonna hop right into it i'm in my browser and i'm using edge dev so it's microsoft's open source choice to use and yeah so it's the new browser so if you just type portal.azure.com in, in the bar at the top and you click your email if you haven't signed in this is actually going to be using your credits and then we're going to click create a resource with this resource we'll type logic app right i'm going to jump into some slides so i can explain how the app will work and link it to logic apps Step one, we will use our trigger to gather all the tweets with a certain hashtag or a certain word. Step two, we will use our action, sentiment analysis, to find out whether a tweet is positive or negative. Step three, we will send out emails using our condition. This condition will use different connectors for different email services, for example, Outlook and Gmail. So you've got your trigger, your condition and your actions, okay? So we'll click create and we'll give it a name. So we'll say tutorial for logic apps. The resource group will say tutorial video. Remember this resource like group name that you give it and we'll choose a location for West Europe. We'll click create. So it'll, it'll deploy. What we also want to set up is an Azure cognitive service. So we'll search for cognitive service and we'll click create. Okay, so this will be useful for later and we'll say cognitive service. We're doing this at the beginning so that uh, you can make sure these locations are set up the same. So this should be the same as the location you just chose, pricing tier, S0, and resource group. So you want to use the same one that you just made. So it would be a tutorial video in my case. And you click confirm. So this name is already being used. So we'll say for logic app. And there you go. So we'll click create. You might need to give it a different name yourself. Okay, deployment in progress as well, so that doesn't matter at this stage. So we'll go to all resources, and you click your resource, and you have Logic Apps Designer. So it's really, really user-friendly. At the beginning, I'll say start with a common trigger. You've even got a video. So what we want is when a new tweet is posted, you also have different options. So when a new file is created on OneDrive, you've even got when a new email is received, there's a bunch of templates down here, so you can do ones based on Ethereum, smart contracts, Dropbox. All of these connectors are available to you, and it's awesome because you don't need to do any of the authentication using code, so that's pretty cool, right? Um, let's go here, start with the common trigger, and we'll do when a tweet is posted on a new tweet, right? Uh, look at this. Sign in, right? So you get your portal for authentication, you'll click authorize app. You can read all of that if you want and you'll click continue when a new tweet is posted so let's go on twitter and we'll check what's trending today so we've got saturday thoughts let's do that and we're gonna type saturday thoughts this will be happening once every minute and this is essentially our trigger for our application this will add an array of tweets with hashtag saturday thoughts and logic apps will handle this in the background so that we can use this in an action we're going to use Azure Cognitive Services to do a sentiment analysis. If you can't see this, you can search for detect sentiment and it will come up here. So not detect language, it's detect sentiment. Click that. 
And this is where we need the connection name, so we will make that up now. Detect sentiment would work fine. And your account key and your site URL. If you go into resources or resources, I'm creating a new tab with middle click, or you can right click and do open a new tab. If you go to your cognitive service that you made and you get your key and your endpoint. So this is quick start, it's all there for you. I'm copying them both. And if I just paste it in here, I'm using Windows key and V for my clipboard history. So this is where your key goes and this is where your endpoint goes from here. Okay, paste that in there, click create. So that's done for you. You've got your tweet and you've got your detect sentiment. So you want to detect your sentiment based on what from the tweet, right? You want to detect it based on the text and this text will be Look at this. This is dynamic content. Okay, so you want to get the tweet text. Oops You want the original original tweet text. Okay, that's it. You don't need any of this. You can hide that and You click new step. Okay, so you've got your tweet. You've got your Sentiment analysis and now you need a condition and remember we want to be checking if it's positive or negative so we actually want to make sure it's really, really positive. The value that we are going to be using is 0 0.75. So we actually need to use the score. The score is actually passed in as a parameter because it's within the scope of our application. So we're able to use any variables within the application. So we're going to say if the score is greater than or equal to 0 0.75. And that's that. So if it is true, meaning the score is greater than or equal to 0 0.75, we are going to send an email. So if you type send an email. So for the first example, I'm going to be using Gmail. And then for the false scenario, I will be using Outlook. I'm just demonstrating how you can use multiple services in one application. Click allow. And what you want to do is you want to say, give it an email that you want to send it to. You're going to give it a subject. Subject's going to be whatever you want. So this could be positive tweet by and then original tweet tweet username. And we're going to give it a body. So this body will be, I'm going to say, the, there was a positive tweet about Saturday by username. And then we're going to do a colon and we're going to say original tweet text. This was created in Logic Apps in a quick video. I'm going to put my name at the bottom. There was a positive tweet about Saturday Thoughts by the original tweet, by the username, and then the original tweet text. And we're going to say at time. So that's that, if it's positive. And if it's false, we're going to... Let's use Outlook, okay? So we're going to say from a different email, because I want to demonstrate how you can use different services. So we're going to say send an email, and we're going to sign in, click that, and there you go, it's a bit different, so you can see I had to manually create these, but in Outlook these are required for the connector. So I'm going to give it the same recipient, I'm going to say negative tweet, or well, not totally positive tweet, <laughs> bye. Original tweet username. I'm gonna say there was not such a positive view on this <laughs> tweet. <laughs> and we're not gonna name and frame them, we're gonna say tweet text. This was created in Logic Apps in a quick video. Sama. Okay, there you go, that's all it is. and. I'm going to make sure everything is set up. So you've got the search text, what you're searching for, the interval, of how often you're going to check for it, the sentiment, so what you're actually analysing, the original tweet text. You're going to say if the score is greater than or equal to 0 0.75, then you'll send out an email from Gmail and you'll say this is a positive tweet by blah 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 created at that. And if it's not, we're just going to say, oh, this is not such a positive view on this tweet. And... Um, We'll give them the tweet but not name and frame them and that's that we'll be able to see it's from different emails you have to just click save and there you go now you go click 
here and you click here overview and there shouldn't be any runs yet because we didn't save it but when you save it it will actually start running your application and if you give it like some time we'll say within a minute or so so we got some successes and we got some fails but i think i know why it failed some of these tweets aren't actually in English, so we're getting some fails when it's trying to do sentiment analysis. But that's alright, we've got a bunch of successes. We've got a bunch of emails, look at that. There was a positive tweet about Saturday Thoughts by blah blah blah. Happy weekend everyone, which is amazing. People, which amazing people are working. Awesome, and we can go to the tweets. And there you go. It's actually really nice, let's like that. Can go back, not a uh, totally positive tweet, and you can see that we're getting different emails. So, this is my student partner email from Outlook, and then all these ones are from my Gmail. So, yeah, that's that. It's um, now running on the cloud. I can literally shut down my PC, and this will run in the background. You probably don't want to do that. You can mess around with these things, have a go. Try hooking up different connectors and messing around with the different conditions. You can actually, if you go back into the designer, you can add multiple things. So you can do, you can do and all these things. So you can add a, you can do groups, everything. And if you want, you can even see the code. So the code behind all of this. It's really cool. So it's using JSON, using its key pair values, so JavaScript object notation. Yes, yeah, really cool. At the end, you also want to make sure that you delete all your resources and all your resource groups to make sure that you don't get any unwarranted charges when you're not using the service anymore. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope that uh, got you interested in doing more Azure things. Again, I'm a Microsoft student partner. I will be trying to do more of these videos in the future, running in my own workshops or webinars or running them with other people. Let's get in contact with me. I'm on Twitter at SalmonMKC here. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. There you go. Oh my days. <laughs> Look at all of this. What? Is that my name? Oh, Salmon Khan. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. And let me know what you want me to do next time. There's a bunch of things here. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Message me on Twitter. And yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely day and see you next time.